Hey everybody, mm. enjoying some delicious ice cream here this nice holiday season, which if you didn't know, because if you're watching this video in like April or something, it's the holidays. That's why we have our very fantastic television fireplace. But anyway, we thought in lieu of the holidays, what we might do while we have the chance was do a quick walkthrough of the Ford Ranger that we built for SEMA since it happens to be here. So, why don't we get started? Here it is, the Ranger XLT that we have, 2019 model. This vehicle at current is for sale and probably will be for a little bit. Uh, not us, we're not selling it. It's actually Young Automotive Group. We just have it temporarily for a little bit and it's heading up that way. What we have here, as we can walk through, I guess we'll start right here with the front bumper. Sorry, I'm gonna like walk and chew, it's a thing. This is our Expedition 1 front bumper that we did. We ended up doing a full wraparound bull bar for the front. It's similar to how we do the Tundra, the 07 to uh, 14 Tundra, bull, or 13, excuse me, 07 to 13 Tundra bull bar, very similar. Um, angles are a little bit different on it, thus it being a you know different car, different vehicle, but very similar styling. So we have the one single bar that wraps all the way around. We did make the provisions for the sensor holes that came into the vehicle, that came with the vehicle. Um, it being a Ford, it was a little bit different, but everything worked out pretty good. For this build, particularly, we opted for Factor 55, Factor 55 flat link, and we ran a come up winch on here. I think it's a 9.5 um, Seal Gen 2, which are great winches. As you can see right here, as far as the space goes, we opted to run this thing a little bit differently. As far as accessing everything up in here, you do have the access holes, access holes down here. You also have right here, you can put a high lift right on there if you wanted to. You gotta be careful of the sensor location. It's a little bit tricky, but you can put a high lift right there and uh, use that for a mounting location for a high lift. We did the cut on this different than most other companies are gonna do it. And it just gave us more, a higher approach and a little bit more clearance right here as far as the front clearance with the vehicle. It also kind of tightened this up area really nice so you get really good protection with where the bull bar runs. The lights that we ran are PF530s. We were able to tie the lights directly in with the uh, OEM switch, fog light switch. So it won't work with OEM fog lights. A lot of people ask those questions. It's usually just the fog lights are a little, they're really designed to fit in with the bumper. And so it ends up being one of those things where we make it more for an aftermarket light, a more high performance type light. Now an additional very unique as aspect is what we did here as far as with the side marker, is we kept it in location, but we integrated it into the bumper. So this is the OEM side light, but it's such a clean, nice fit. It's in there, it's nice and solid. Looks good. So down below here, we have a skid plate that comes right up here. It's really crazy how low the frame actually sits on this thing, because the bottom of the frame flange is literally right there. And with the skid plate, the original, the OEM skid plate actually sat down here a little ways, so we had a really weird gap. So making it work, we didn't want to make the bumper super thick. So what we ended up doing is we just brought in and built our own skid plate here. So this is the skid plate that's available has ventilation coming up right through here, which is nice. And we also have a lower, I guess you'd call it a mid skid plate back there that replaces the uh, really thin OEM skid plate. So to give you an idea of what we're replacing here with this skid plate or these skid plates, this is your mid skid. So it's got a lot of dents in it, not denting, I should say, it's got a lot of ribs in it and stuff like that. I mean, there's good structure in here that makes it strong, 
when you really think about rock impact, that's not gonna hold up to very much, especially with these big, huge slits in here and that kind of thing. Good for ventilation, but not really good for taking much of an impact. This is the same uh, thickness of material. I know like they have more off-road versions that are a little more heavy duty, uh, but these are extremely thin and are not gonna take a lot of hits. This, however, is all 10 gauge steel, which is equivalent to uh, about equivalent to eighth of an inch, a little bit thicker than eighth of an inch. Same thing with the mid skid. So much stronger, much more heavy duty. We have the nice bend coming up here on the side that's good for boxing everything, taking a nice solid impact if needed. Overall, it's, it's a huge improvement over this, particularly if you're planning on actually using it for off-road. All right, let's move on to the rocker guards we have right here. So, these are a little bit tricky to get in place, but they worked out pretty well. The reason why they're tricky is just the mounting that you have against the frame. These are basically our standard rocker guard that we do, very similar to the Tacoma. We have our step in here, our aluminum step with our tread plate on. So they're nice and stable, they're rigid. It's a little funky how we had to mount them because there are no very specific mounting holes in the frame. Toyota gives you a lot of different mounting holes, which is really nice. But when it comes to Ford, there really wasn't much there. And so we had to kind of improvise. There's a few spots in here if you're going to actually do these, if you're gonna actually install these, where you do have to do a little bit of drilling and a little bit of grinding as well, just to make it so everything's gonna fit nice and, and clean. But all in all, they worked out really well and uh, we're really happy with them. Nice setup. So up top, we have our Mule Ultra Rack. A little bit different how we had to mount it on this one, specifically just because of how the gutters are. It does require drilling, and there's a little more to it just because you have to actually drop the, the headliner. Kind of a lot of work, but I, all in all, I think it's uh, definitely a nice look. It's very rigid, very solid, and uh, it turned out really clean. So you can run with our Mule Ultra with the cutout, you can run up to a 40 inch light bar in there. Now light bars kind of all kind of sit in that range. 40, 41, 42, all in that range, you're generally pretty safe to be able to mount them. Anything beyond that, once you get to about 43, it's gonna be too tight of a fit. The construction is all aluminum. Mounts are still, of course, but all aluminum construction, nice, solid, rigid designated for up to 200 pounds of load, evenly distributed. So all in all, I think, I feel like it turned out really good. We're really happy with how it turned out. It's a good rack. All right, let's talk about the mule bed rack here. The original design that we brought up here was basically these tower systems with a load bar going across and it was perfect for hauling a tent or things like that. Now we added in a new feature last year where we introduced it, where we had our map panel is what we call it, which stands for modular accessory panel. So we added the modular accessory panels in so you could mount axes and high lifts or shovels or whatnot. In addition to this year, what we did is we adjusted the design so now there's no drilling, it's just a bolt-on design. And we added our backer rack system, which is right up here. Now this allowed us to add a whole bunch of slats in the middle here get a nice rigid side mounting uh, piece. Of course, if you're gonna wear it, you're gonna be using a tent. Tent can go right up here. In this case, we're running a Free Spirit Recreation tent up here. It's a very, very nice tent. And we're happy with it. And uh, it came out really clean all together. So now onto the rear. Now originally on the back of this, we had for the SEMA show, we had a dual swing out tire carrier system. Now we ended up moving away from the dual swing out specifically for the dealership since they're putting it into their showroom. They weren't too sure they wanted a dual swing out. So this is our base rear bumper that we have mounted on here. Now, if you're going to be installing one of these, whether it's a dual swing or just the base model, there's some trickiness that comes into it because there's a fair amount of cutting that is required. It's just one of those things where, I don't know how else to describe it except for it's kind of a Ford does weird stuff thing and uh, not a lot of great mounting back here to, in order to have 
your solid anchor points and things like that that are necessary to have a good off-road bumper. So it does require a fair amount of cutting and trimming. Uh, but you will notice that we were able to make provisions for your parking sensors. So that's always a nice thing. So for the SEMA show, we opted to run with these Falcon Wild Peak MTs. They're a 285 70 17, which is about the max size that you can fit on one of these with a three and a half inch lift. We ended up going with a BDS lift. It's a great lift, comes with replacement upper control arms, which is a really nice feature. Uh, a lot of lifts don't do that, this one does. The wheels we ended up going with were these Black Rhino hard alloy wheels. They really finished the look really good and uh, made it look really tough and rugged. I like it. All right, well, pretty much out of ice cream, so I think it's time for me to close up shop and go get some real food. So we hope you enjoyed the walkthrough. Plenty more to come. Got a lot more vehicles we're gonna be doing throughout the rest of the new year that's coming. And uh, we hope you stay tuned and watch. Mm -hmm.